Thank you, Gautam. Thank you, Gautam. Uh, thank you, Roy. And, um, you know, we have, a, uh, we, we've heard of BEPS for a day and a half. I've been here. I know, uh, you know, there is a sense of reputation and there's, you know, that, that a lot of what has to be said has already been said. Uh, so on this panel, we have, uh, you know, what we have decided is we're not going to talk about any action item in specific. We're going to restrict ourselves just to the topic of how is BEPS going to impact one of the key stakeholders in this entire process, which is the taxpayer. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we've heard there's been, there's, there has been a lot more angst generated around BEPS than there has been, um, you know, uh, euphoria. Uh, you know, people have, you know, beat their chests, they're pulling their hair. But the fact is we have embarked on the BEPS journey. Whether we like it or we don't like it, that journey has begun. It's not going to be an easy route. It seems extremely uphill now. Maybe we are not all prepared, we don't have the right gears, but there is no choice uh, for us, especially as taxpayers, but to adopt and adapt to that, uh, you know, to, to the new environment. So that's what, uh, you know, that's what we're going to, going to be talking about today. We've picked up a few key topics, you know, as panelists, what, what we decided should be discussed. There's, there's a lots of issues to be discussed, but we've picked up five or six key issues. We've tried to represent them graphically and not with words because I think there's just been too many words on slides, so I've tried to attempt to put some slides. This one depicts, you know, that we have the G20 plus the 44 and the whole world has sort of come together to do the BEPS agenda. And then we move on from there. Working, okay, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, is this working now? Yeah. Okay, so that's, you know, we, this is a new, uh, probably a new phrase that, we'll, that we will see very soon. Nothing is certain but, but debts and taxes. <laughs> and it is a bit of a maze, right? Right now we really, we, you know, we've got in, we really don't know where and how we're going to get out of it. But the fact is we have to do that, yeah? And we'll have to negotiate the BEPS, uh, BEPS world. So I will begin um, by asking a few, uh, you know, we have, as I said, a few issues picked up. You know, not all, some panelists will respond to some of those issues, and then we will have some time for Q&A at the end, Gotham, right? So that's, that's the format we have. Uh, so let's begin uh, with what we have to say. The first, um, the first question is, yeah, it's a very obvious one, is do you see, you know, to my, uh, maybe to Vladimir, to start with you, do you see the behavior of MNCs changing, yeah, in the BEPS world? Um, how, how do you see that happening? Okay, we should share probably the mic with, uh, with Mark. So, yes, indeed, um, and I have um, a pleasure of, uh, you know, working in, in at least two, uh, let's say, develop, de develop, developing economies, uh, being in Russia and Saudi Arabia now. And, uh, yes, I see the, the change in behavioral pattern of multinational companies, uh, both uh, those who invest in those jurisdictions, and we call it inbound, uh, tax planning and also, also with respect to those multinational companies that are headquartered there. So and if I may just briefly touch upon three, ex three you know, let's say most typical areas of tax planning, uh, uh, holding and subholding um, functions where multinational company selects actually uh, a jurisdiction to hold their investments. Another one, if I may, uh, if I may say the treasury, the group treasury function, uh, they're like, like group financing, and then the third one, IP, so these three major blocks, then basically BEPS, uh, he's impacting heavily or hitting heavily both of those three functions of uh, multinational tax planning. Withholding, uh, withholding uh, companies will see a clear challenge caused by action uh, six, treaty abuse, by introduction more and more uh, anti-abuse provisions into tax treaties like principal purpose test and uh, uh, LOB, you, the multinationals may face more and more that they are uh, holding companies in typical locations uh, uh, that have been working for decades may suddenly stop, stop working with respect to uh, reduced rates on withholding taxes from all those subsidiaries in developing countries that, uh, that they, they have been holding and which pay dividends. Second, uh, group financing. So, 
a huge challenge on group financing regimes will be, uh, will be caused by the action step two and four, uh, interest deductions, and also transfer pricing, and also action, action five, which is harmful tax regime. So and as a response, uh, multinationals are seeking, seeking to reduce so-called conduit structures, back-to-back -back financing, but rather they select uh, NID regimes, notional interest deduction regimes, and try, trying to use, you know, bringing capital into company to then uh, use debt financing. So that's what, what I am seeing. Then finally, IP. Uh, everyone has seen the development of those IP boxes, and multinational companies were trying to consolidate IP their IP in those, um, in those companies exactly to avoid uh, you know, beneficial ownership uh, challenges in source countries from which royalties were paid. So now we are seeing that these IP regimes are under heavy attack, under, under heavy attack by OECD. So again, multinational companies are, ha have done their traditional tax planning and lo uh, along those, alongside those three functions. And, uh, uh, the, the major change that BEPS is now bringing, as I see, is that they need to reconsider those approaches and enhance, enhance their tax risk management, uh, enhance the thoughts and the, you know, the thinking that they put into their, into their structures. So that, that's my observation.